everyone. So we continue our discussion on abnormal uterine bleeding. We are primarily discussing the causes of abnormal uterine bleeding, the palm coin classification. And we have already discussed about polyps, adenomyosis, leomyoma or uterine fibroids, and have begun our discussion on gynecologic malignancies or cancers, and have already discussed about endometrial cancer, its staging, treatment, etc. I request you to watch the previous videos to get a better understanding about the topic. Proceeding with our discussion on gynecological malignancies, our today's topic of discussion is cervical cancer. So what is cervical cancer? Cervical cancer is cancer of the cervix. So before we proceed, let us get a brief idea about the anatomy of the cervix. So the cervix is the lower part of the uterus that connects the vagina to the upper part of the uterus. Ectocervix is the portion of the cervix that is protruding into the vagina. And the endocervix is the inner part of the cervix that forms a canal that connects the uterus to the vagina. Also, we have the internal os and external os over here. The endocervical canal is lined with glandular or columnar epithelium and the ectocervix is lined with squamous epithelium. When the ectocervix meets the endocervix, there is change of cell type from squamous epithelium to columnar epithelium and this area is called as the transition zone where we see the squamocolumnar cells. Now it is important to know about the anatomy and also about the transition zone as most abnormal cell changes and most cervical cancers begin in the transition zone. Cervical cancer is the most common gynecological cancer encountered in Indian women. On our previous video about endometrial cancer, we have gone through the various gynecological cancers, right? The vulvovaginal cancer, ovarian cancer, and also about their overall prevalence. And we had seen that cervical cancer is the commonest gynecological cancer we see especially in our country and it is followed by endometrial cancer. So almost all the cervical cancers are caused by a virus called the HPV or human papilloma virus which is a sexually transmitted infection. There are more than 150 strains of HPV and there are at least 12 high-risk strains of HPV but only two types that is type 16 and 18 cause the majority of HPV related cancers including those involving the cervix, vagina, vulva, penis and anus. High-risk HPV strains can also lead to cancers of the throat, tongue and tonsils known as oropharyngeal cancer. Now let us talk about the risk factors for cervical cancer. So risk factors include coitus before 18 years of age, that is becoming sexually active before 18 years of age, first baby before 20 years of age, multiparity. Now multiparity here is a risk factor for cervical cancer. Now when we make a comparative study with endometrial cancer which we have done in our previous video the risk factor for endometrial cancer was nulliparity early menarche and late menopause because we are women are exposed to estrogen for a longer period of time in cases of nulliparity early menarche and late menopause now when we come to cervical cancer the risk factor here is multiparity Okay, then we again have poor birth spacing between pregnancy. Now, one very important thing to remember is sexually active people contact HPV at some point in their lives. The virus spreads easily through skin-to-skin -skin sexual contact. HPV does not always cause symptoms and many people with the virus don't know that they have it. More than 90% of all new HPV infections go away or become undetectable within two years, even without treatment, 
and our body's immune system clears the infection out effectively. The long-lasting or persistent infection usually leads to cervical cancer. So, even if you come, even if you are contacted with HPV infection, the strains 16, the strains 16 and 18 that are known to cause cervical cancer, you are definitely, it's not that you are going to get cervical cancer. Because if the body's immune system is at an optimum level, it will definitely clear out the HPV infection effectively. Only the chronic or the long-lasting infection, persistent infection, has the cap capacity or is a primary risk factor that usually leads to cervical cancer. Continuing with the risk factors of cervical cancer, we have multiple sexual partners, poor personal hygiene, concomitant STDs, that is sexually transmitted infection. Like if you are already, if you already have HIV infection or any other sexually transmitted infection, you are easily vulnerable or easily prone to get uh, HPV infection. Again, immunocompromised status. Uh, oral contraceptive usage, prolonged use of combined oral contraceptive pills and progesterone-only pills increase the risk of cervical cancer. So as we have discussed earlier, 90% of young women with H HPV infection show spontaneous resolution within two years. Even if they do not realize, they don't even realize that they have had HPV infection because it is most of the time asymptomatic. Only those with persistent infection after the age of 30 years are at a high risk of pre-invasive and invasive cancer. So other risk factors that are not mentioned here include smoking and alcohol consumption. Now let us discuss about the signs and symptoms of cervical cancer. The average age of occurrence is 35 to 50 years. So we can say women, uh, young women in their 30s, like in the age group 30 to 40, and women, elderly women in the age group 50 to 60. They are uh, primarily, the average age of occurrence is young women age group and the elderly women age group. Okay, so the average age of occurrence is 35 to 50 years and it is commonly seen in young women, usually in the childbearing period of life and the precancerous lesion occurs 10 to 15 years earlier. Another very important symptom of cervical cancer is irregular vaginal bleeding and one very peculiar symptom which must not be ignored if experienced is postcoital bleeding. It is one of the peculiar symptom of cervical cancer and we also have heavy menstrual bleeding. Now other symptoms include leucorrhea, blood stained and offensive discharges, dirty vaginal discharges. Now dirty vaginal discharge usually from the necrotic tissue of the cancerous growth. Uh, for example, uh, this is the uterus. So here in the cervix, you have a cauliflower-like cancerous growth. And we have discussed this earlier as well. The edges of the cancerous under, uh, cancer under the edges, okay? It undergoes necrosis and this may lead to dirty vaginal discharge, which is an important symptom. Uh, next we have is pyometra. Now, uh, if the cancer of the cervix grows to such a is, is if the growth is such that it obliterates the opening of the cervix there may be collection of pus inside the uterus sorry inside here collection of pus inside the uterus which is called as pyometra okay so pyometra is collection of pus inside the uterus and your doctor may also do a per speculum and per vaginal examination and may reveal a growth that may reveal a growth on the cervix and the uterus may also be bulky this uterus may feel bulky due to pyometra these are usually like growth on the cervix bulky uterus these are all the findings uh, that the doctor will uh, find out during the 
examination. Now, you may also experience symptoms like pelvic pain, vaginal pain, and also dysuria. Dysuria is pain while urinating. And uh, there may also be bleeding in the urination, which must not be always visible to the eyes. Like your urine may not look like it is red in color or there is bleeding. It could be microscopic bleeding also. So, dysuria and hematuria could also be the symptoms of cervical cancer. So stay tuned everyone as we will be continuing with the discussion of abnormal uterine bleeding in our upcoming videos. Do consider to like, share and subscribe to the channel if this information was useful to you and follow me on Instagram for more such helpful health related topics. Thank you.